Throughout my adventures, I have encountered a select few animals which were so majestic, beautiful, or enigmatic that my experience filming them remains a vivid memory to this day. While exploring the western US this summer, I actually encountered several animals which managed to captivate me in this manner, and have already featured two of them on my channel. But I could not possibly consider making videos about the bison or pronghorn antelope without also covering another icon of the American West, the North American elk. There are four subspecies of this animal found in areas across the US. Rocky Mountain Elk in the Rocky Mountain West, Roosevelt's Elk near the northwestern coast, Tule Elk in Central California, and Manitoban Elk found in the Northern Great Plains. This video focuses on the conservation history and biology of the Rocky Mountain Elk, as this is the subspecies that I was able to film on my adventure. The most recognizable and distinguishing feature of the Rocky Mountain Elk is that the males, also called bulls, actually grow the largest antlers out of any of the North American elk varieties. These massive structures can grow up to 5 feet long and weigh over 30 pounds per pair. Every year in the early summer, bull elk will grow a new set of antlers, which will be covered in a layer of skin called velvet. Blood vessels located throughout this membrane deposit calcium to create the new headgear, a growing process which can take about 90 days for young individuals or up to 140 days for mature elk. Once the structure has fully developed, the velvet dries up and is rubbed off, exposing the bony antler below. The bulls will use these to spar and compete for mates during the breeding season, and mature elk with larger antlers are naturally more attractive to females. Yellowstone National Park is home to these Rocky Mountain elk, which were in the early phases of the breeding season when I visited in midsummer. Elk are actually the most common ungulate in the park, even more numerous than mule or white-tailed deer. An estimated 10 to 20,000 individuals spend their summer here, where they can be spotted in a variety of habitats browsing on grasses, shrubs, and sapling trees. Throughout the year, the elk will follow the new plant growth, as freshly sprouting vegetation is much more nutritious than old growth food sources. With those population numbers within the park and about 1 million Rocky Mountain elk and the entire wild population, it is hard to imagine that elk were ever scarce in the American West. However, human settlement in the areas where elk once lived caused significant population decreases in the 1800s, and there were once an estimated 10 million of these incredible animals living across our nation. Human expansion drove the eastern elk to total extinction, and reduced all other subspecies to critical numbers. It was only through intensive conservation efforts from organizations such as the Rocky Mountain Elk Federation that elk populations have rebounded to where they are today. Once the elk were re-established across a large portion of their western home range, including Yellowstone, researchers encountered a very different problem. With very few natural predators to keep them in check, elk were becoming too populous in Yellowstone around the mid-1900s. Without the pressure being applied to herds from top predators such as wolves or mountain lions, the elk were able to stay in the valley areas near the Yellowstone River and browse on the plant life with no worries, where they had a detrimental impact on riparian ecosystems. Young trees and shrubs were eaten before they could mature, meaning they could not put forth roots to help reduce erosion or grow and provide shade over the water. Willow trees, an important food source for beavers and habitat for songbirds, nearly disappeared from the park. Fortunately, when gray wolves were reintroduced in 1995, the elk population responded by spending much less time browsing in exposed valley areas and began exhibiting foraging behavior much more typical of natural populations. Presently, researchers believe that the elk population in the park is at a stable level and will likely remain relatively consistent without unforeseen environmental changes.
Now that the elk are present once again in healthy numbers, they are able to be appreciated by all park guests for the incredible animals that they are. With a sense of smell about 60 times better than our own, it is safe to say that elk are adept at sniffing out danger, and even a whiff of a potential threat can cause wise elk to become extremely wary. And if they don't smell the danger, they probably hear it. An elk's ears are like independently operating satellite dishes, which can rotate to capture sound and determine the noise's direction in relation to the animal. However, should a predator make it through these many advanced alarm systems, an elk is still a large and powerful animal which will defend itself when it sees fit. A kick from a mature elk can easily kill or seriously injure a wolf, and bull elk do not hesitate to use their impressive antlers to make kebabs out of potential predators. Elk will also defend themselves from tourists if they feel threatened, which has led to a few negative human-animal encounters over the years. The best way to avoid an elk attack is to respect these animals for the massive and sometimes aggressive mammals that they are. Try and maintain a distance of at least 50 yards from elk when possible, and if the animal begins foot stamping or shows any other signs of agitation, you should back away as slowly and calmly as possible. If you respect their space, they will respect yours. Well everyone, I really hope that you enjoyed today's episode and learned something new about the Rocky Mountain Elk. If you want to follow my daily adventures, feel free to check out my new blog and social media pages using the links in the description. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch all of my new wildlife videos. This is Ben Zeno of The Wild Report, signing out.